Hello Horror Hounds, welcome to my Horror House. The Blade Trilogy has made its way to Amazon Prime in the UK and I thought this weekend would be a perfect opportunity to revisit those three movies. I first saw Blade when it came out almost 25 years ago and it is one of my favourite cinema going experiences. I went to a midnight screening. It's fair to say UK cinema audiences aren't particularly rowdy, not particularly vocal, but I think probably the majority of people who came to see this screening had been in the pub beforehand because when the film opened, and what what an opening, but barring the, the flashback to sort of Blade's birth, uh, the blood rave, and then when all the blood comes down from the sprinklers, the music kicks in, then Blade turns up, starts kicking all kinds of ass. I've got to tell you, the theatre I was watching it in went absolutely wild. And it's still a kick-ass opening scene some 25 years later. It holds a very special place in my heart. It's very strange to watch the adventures of... <clears throat> this Marvel comic book character, half human, half vampire, who fights vampires, now seeing what the cinematic landscape is now and how really films like Blade helped usher in, for good or ill, this, this uh, era of uh, modern cinema as it is uh, at the moment from Donna's Superman all the way up to Blades. There was lots of baby steps as to how, how do we represent comic books on screen? How do we make comic book movies? And Blade was really one of this new wave, I'd say along with The Crow, that, that had its, its absolute own identity stamped on it from the start, knew what it wanted to be, and set, set about doing it, and almost didn't worry that it was a comic book movie. It's very strange to see how this has developed into, you know, DC and the behemoth that is, is the MCU. And I like going back to this uh, old movie and seeing uh, how spiky it is and how rough around the edges. And it, it's not all smoothed down and all the sharp corners haven't been smoothed off like... I feel a lot of the MC movie, MCU movies now have become. They're, they're, they're safer, they're, they're product. Uh, this has got some real attitude. That opening is so strong. I think it's, it's, it's almost the blood rave, a proof of concept that then barrels us almost through the, the certainly the rest of that movie, and the next two movies to come. Blade sets out his stall in the first 10, 15 minutes, and you know what? I'm, I'm sold. I think there was probably something in the air at that time. Buffy the Vampire Slayer had maybe been on air for about a year. I don't think it was the cultural juggernaut quite yet that it was about to become, but certainly there was something in the air, and, and, and the time was right for, for vampires to make... Uh, their return in this kind of form in, with uh, with a mixture of uh, sort of uh, comedic elements and uh, martial arts. So it's it's fair to say that it's very hard for me to talk about this movie without my nostalgia goggles. It's it's clearly let's put it this way: sort of fast spectacle action movies have moved on from the era of Blade, and it looks. It looks quite cute and quite twee in that context. But I think what time has given it is a slightly different context. Yet there are certain elements of it that were the vanguard of the new wave of comic book movies and Hollywood action movies. And certainly in comparison to a lot of modern day Hollywood action, it looks very low key, small scale. As I say, quite quaint. But watching it back, what it seems to me to be, rather than uh, the next step forward, is also paying homage to the Hong Kong martial arts action movies of the past. And as part of that 
lineage. I think it's a really strong contender and a really excellent entry in that genre of cinema. Hollywood struggled to get the kinetic energy of Hong Kong martial arts movies into their action movies. They tried time and time and time again. And I actually think that Blade is one of the, the high points where they, they managed to merge the two well. Uh, I think it all comes together in the nexus that is Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes just is Blade for me. What can I say? The, the man was, I was reading at the time that he was really keen to make a Black Panther movie, as, as you can imagine why he would want to. Um, but they went with Blade instead. And I just think the man makes Blade. He is Blade. Uh, we're supposed to be getting a new Blade movie from the MCU at some point. That keeps getting pushed back and back and back. And then, you know what? I'm, I'm not that hungry for it. I'm not that eager for it because it will be Blade within the context of this relatively safe and saccharine MCU that we have now where things are just created to link us into the next chapter, the next chapter. Blade, certainly, and less so, we'll get onto Blade Trinity later, but the other movies, Blade is the spiky, punky comic book movie with attitude. It's not concerning itself with linking into this or that, or even sequels at this point, and it's all the better and all the stronger for it. It tells the story it needs to tell. And do you know what? It's 18 certificate. There's blood aplenty. The vampires are nasty. The vampires are vampires. It's not a horror movie, but you get um, you get vampires uh, uh, biting humans, smearing their mouths with blood and then dabbling their tongues together. And uh, it's, it's icky and sticky and the vampires are exactly what they need to be. I love the vampire law. I love the vampire world that they build in this with pure bloods and the, and the hierarchy there. And you've got Stephen Dorff as Deacon Frost, who's not a pure blood. He's clearly got a chip on his shoulder about that and thinks that um, the vampire world should evolve and move forward rather than staying as, as stagnant as it has for thousands and thousands of years. You get briefly the notion of these uh, zombie vampires who don't take to vampirism and the, the wonderful inclusion of Pearl, the, the archivist, the really sort of gross, leech-like figure. It's, it's a great world to drop our main character into. It feels like a full world where vampires exist. And then uh, Blade comes along and has martial arts fights with, with vampires and the techno music kicks in and it's, it's a party time movie. Udo Kier is always welcome in uh, genre movies. He's here as one of the, the heads of the vampires who butts heads with Stephen Dorff as Deacon Frost, who is a superb antagonist. And uh, it's, it's got some fun fights, excellent action, the vampires are cool, the hero's cool, the antagonist is cool, and it's got some, some great moments when uh, Blade calls Pearl, the, the archivist, Biscuit Boy. <laughs> I don't know why. This time around, I found that absolutely hilarious. Uh, there's a scene in the fight towards the end, one of the most badass moments in any martial arts fight I've ever seen, where Blade rips the throat out of one vampire and then throws it into the face of the next oncoming vampire. And of course, Blade has, you know, without irony, one of the greatest lines in cinema history. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up here. So yeah, to modernise, it might look a, a little thin, a little quaint, but damn it, it's it's got heart, it's got spirit, it's got bucket loads of energy. It's got a, a superbly charismatic lead who uh, is also kind of the straight man, which I think it needs. The world around him is so crazy that Blade needs to sort of be this stoic uh, character at the centre, which is all, all the better when he gets uh, funny lines or little character moments. And they try and sprinkle those in throughout all three films. And I don't find it surprising. We'll talk more about this in Blade Trinity. That Wesley Snipes got very protective of the character. And I'm not surprised he got into a bit of a huff <laughs> during the third movie. But 
for good or ill, Blade, in trying to pay homage to Hong Kong martial arts movies of the past, really did usher in, uh, in part, the modern era of cinema that we that we have today, and. I prefer its punkier attitude now to the more slick commercial offerings that have sprung from its loins, if I can use that metaphor. I bid you welcome. I welcome you to my house. Welcome to my house. Welcome to my home. 